January 22, 2008, the death date of one of the most fascinating and talented young actors to have ever graced the big screen, Heath Ledger. The news that Heath died from an overdose by a cocktail of prescription drugs stunned the world. But why did he do that? His career was soaring. Financially, he was very successful. He had a two-year-old daughter. It doesn't make any sense, does it? In this episode, we're going back to January of 2008 to figure out what happened to Heath Ledger. And first, let's zoom in on his career. All of us, all of us remember Ledger for his roles in 10 Things I Hate About You, Brokeback Mountain, and of course, for his iconic performance as Joker in The Dark Knight. From the first glance, it seems like Heath's career was at its peak, but let's review the timeline a little more carefully. We're in late 2007, early 2008. The Dark Knight hadn't been released yet. It was years since the release of Brokeback Mountain, and nearly a decade since 10 Things I Hate About You. His most recent movies, Candy and I Am Not There, neither succeeded at the box office nor impressed the critics. Bottom line is, career-wise, that period wasn't really successful for him, and he was actually going through some turbulence. What about personal life? Oh, there was some turbulence there as well. He had just split with his long-term partner, actress Michelle Williams, who he had a daughter with. And he moved out of their house in Brooklyn and found himself a place in Manhattan, where he eventually died a few months later. His mental state wasn't stable either. The truth is, the Oscar-nominated actor never considered himself to be good enough. In a 2005 Times interview, Ledger noted that his art came from a place of discomfort. When I get cast in something, I always believe I shouldn't have been cast. I fooled them again. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. Self-doubt and anxiety have been Heath Ledger's long-term companions. His physical condition wasn't ideal, to say the least. To boost self-confidence, Heath worked extra hard on his characters. Just recently, he locked himself for a month in a hotel room, where he was slowly portraying a psychopathic character of the Joker for the role in The Dark Knight. It was a difficult role for Ledger, who had made no secret of his use of prescription drugs to help combat stress and insomnia. Stress, insomnia, sedative drugs... I've already seen a similar perfect storm in Michael Jackson's case that we reviewed just recently. So here's what actually happened on the night when Heath Ledger died. He clearly had trouble falling asleep, as he used six kinds of painkillers, sleeping pills, and anti-anxiety drugs. A deadly cocktail. We know for sure that at 1 p.m. the next day, he was still alive, as his housekeeper heard him snoring. At around 3 p.m., Heath's massage therapist had arrived at this lock. She set up the massage table in the bedroom, but couldn't wake Ledger up. It took less than 10 minutes for the paramedics to arrive, but Heath's condition was already hopeless. It doesn't seem to have been a suicide, rather an accidental overdose. The combination of the drugs put Heath into deep sedation. It's a medical term used to describe a sedation level when the brain shuts off and can no longer control even the essential processes such as breathing. At some point between 1 and 3 p.m. on January 22nd, Heath Ledger basically stopped breathing. Even though he used prescription drugs, it's likely that he had developed an addiction and couldn't fall asleep without his pills. It's unclear why he took so many of them, but considering the perfect storm surrounding him, turbulent career moment, painful split, stress and anxiety related to the new role, all of that could have provoked him to increase the dose. This is the story of Heath Ledger's untimely death. This is how it was.